we um, are looking at okay, this Okay, it just now up, started. As we look at this blow up again, this is Husqvarna model 116, and that's what we're looking for on here. We're not looking for Emerald model 188 or 118 or 122. So anytime you see that, you won't have to do the fill in the blank answer. So we'll mark those out before you start your test on it. Okay? We're going to study this together on day seven. We're going to do 10 questions. I'm going to take it up. We're going to study the next 10, memorize what they do. I'll have it back there for the next 10. Okay, I'll take it up. We'll study it again. And you'll memorize the last 10 or 30 questions. Are you going to keep this and study? I'm going to give it back to you the day we start to study it together. Okay? Because you don't want to take this out of class and worry about it. I just want you to learn from here for safety, especially. So, no one has ever failed this class. This is for safety and you learn to use your machine. Does that sound okay? Yeah. All right. Once you learn to use your machine, we'll be using almost every day. So that's a good thing. Because that's why you're here, right? All right, so on this machine, I do want you to look again. That's just the overview, and I'll make copies for you. And you understand how to take the test. It's going to be easy. And the first thing I want to talk about is the heritage of the machine. Because machines are never used to have power plugs. And that's exactly what this is right here. This is a power plug, okay? So this is the socket where the power plug goes in. And then right here, you have to have an outlet to plug in this part, right? But used to, in years past, you didn't have electricity. And that's the truth. But a sewing machine was a luxury. And how you operated it was with a foot pedal. And this is still called a foot pedal or a treadle machine. And so you would turn the hand wheel, and that's what that is. And it would allow you, so you can still sew on a sewing machine without power. It's your own power that operates the sewing machine with the hand wheel. You always turn the hand wheel towards your heart. Okay? So that's one thing you need to understand about the machine is it is operable without electricity. But since we have electricity, you have to have these two connections for sure plug in. So here's your plug into your outlet. And here's your plug into your electricity. All right, so when you turn your machine on right here, you see the light comes on. And when the light comes on, that usually means the machine is on. But sometimes you turn the machine on and the light doesn't come on, then the light's just turned out. And okay? All right, so this is like a gas pedal, and it's called a foot pedal. And some machines have a knee control, and it plugs in right here, and then you operate your machine with the knee control that comes around to your knee. And, uh, our embroidery machines are sewing machines as well. Like that. They don't have a foot pedal. Okay? And so as we look at the sewing machine, it is good to know the parts of the machine. And I want to make sure you do it. And so this is called a throat. This is a small throat. Quilting machines for quilters. They like a big throat so they can get all their material into there. Okay? This is called the face of the machine. This is the handle. I'm going to turn it so you can see the face of the machine. And on the face of the machine, you're going to see this is the presser foot pressure dial. And here's the presser foot right here. Okay. This is a thread cutter right here. This is a buttonhole lever. You drop it down when you make a buttonhole. Okay. And you would have to change the presser foot. And this is the presser foot. And it, sorry. it just pops off of the machine like this. It pops off the ankle. The foot has to have an ankle. And this is a thumb So you can see that compressor foot. And I'll push it around. It's labeled A. But like I said, if we wanted to make a buttonhole, we would change the adjustment. We would put a buttonhole pressure foot on it. That's a lot different, isn't it? That's a lot different than the one we just had. Again, you would use your buttonhole lever. I'm going to push that back up here. And I would pick up my presser foot at ankle by using this lever, the presser foot lever that's back there. And I can actually watch this now. Don't play this. Watch this. I can actually pick up my presser foot higher with my lever. And I can pop this in there like that. And I would put my buttonhole lever down. And it would help me make a buttonhole when I set this properly. And I would use my book to set this up properly. Okay? Uh, so, that gave you an idea of some of the things, just a couple of things you can do with your machine right here. You can make a button hole, you're going to be able to just sew with your hand if the electricity goes out. <laughs> we don't want to do that, do we? 
All right, so I'm going to put this pressure foot back on. You've seen two pressure feet. All right, again, you know this is pressure foot, ankle, thumb screw, buttonhole lever. You know, this is an extension table because over there on that machine, you have an extended work surface. On this machine, you don't because this has been removed. Again, this is an extension table and a storage area. Okay, so as you can see, it's a nice storage area as well. Now, when I take this extension table off, it creates a free arm, and that is exactly what that's called, a free arm. And you can see that you would want to do small work with that. For example, maybe a baby doll dress, a child's outfit, a sleeve. And you all know what a buttonhole looks like, right? Everybody understood that. So you can make that. All right. Also on this machine, do you see these teeth right here? This is called the feet. And I want you to see the feet on this machine. This is the stitch length. You can actually see the length on this dial. It's called stitch length dial. And when I set it on stitch length four, that's the longest stitch length. Now watch these feet teeth as I, what I'm going to do is turn my hand to always for my heart. Watch the teeth. They go down and they traverse up and then they pick up. You see that? And then they go back and they come up. See how that works? I just sit and make holes in my hair last year. I'd sit there and make holes in my hair last year. We're going to do that this year because I'm going to show you what the feed is. Okay, so we understand that these teeth, this is called the feed. And it feeds through the machine our material or our paper. And so what I'm going to show you is when you watch this, I have a lever back here. There's a lever. Do you see that lever right there? And what's going to happen? I'm going to push that lever, and I want you to watch these teeth that are brought down. And that's called the drop feed lever. Okay, so then I push that lever. Watch. Do you see them drop? Yeah. Okay. Why would you want that to happen? Anybody know? Okay, we are not supposed to. But have you seen beautiful stencil quilting? It's a little snail like pattern, and it goes back and forth on pocketbooks and blankets and beautiful accessories. Kind of like That's what you would free motion quilt. And that's called stencil. And so that's a lot of fun to do. But I just engaged my feet so my feet will traverse my fabric or my. Uh, now we want to talk about this is the handle, right? That's the handle on the machine face. And I've already talked about what this is. Let's see what that does. As I put my paper under the feed and the pressure foot, and I'm going to put my pressure foot down. Can you do that on there? With my pressure foot lever. Other side. Other side. Other side. Other side. With your right hand. Put your right hand. Nope. Keep no, going up. Go up. up. There you go. Now up. And up. Down. Keep going up. Right here. Now. now you try. And when you put it down, don't let it slam like I did. <laughs> it's okay. That's all right. Okay. So are you all ready? You want to try it? Have you done it before? I want you to do it. Oh, you're so fat. You can't draw me. I'm kidding. <laughs> Not even close to that. She knows. It. She weighs a lot for a little girl. Like I try to pick her up. I can't pick her up. Hey, she weighs like you're her size. You're her size. Alright, now what I'm going to show you is when I put my pressure foot down on my piece of paper, I'm going to give you a piece of paper too. And we're going to do all this up. Okay, are you guys ready? I'm yeah. putting my paper down. And remember, I told you, this is my pressure foot pressure lip. I mean, dial. It's a dial. And I'm going to try to pull it on, too. And I'm going to turn it. Woo! And I'm going to do the same thing. Good. Zero. Now pull it like this. Oh, that's better. Is it on zero? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah
put it on. You go ahead and pull on zero, and I'll move it as you pull. Pull on zero. Uh -huh. right here. Oh, okay. So you're pulling. Pull, 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 pull. I'm okay. putting on one. Is it more pressure? Yeah. And keep pulling. Pull harder. <laughs> okay. And then three. Pull harder. So now you know what this does. I want you all to do that too. We'll start with zero because if you don't, you tend to tear your paper. And that could be a problem, right? So here we go. On zero, pull. Pull, pull, pull. Pull on one. On two. And on three. And that's the presser foot pressure dial. So you see that actually does perform a lot challenge. You want to do it right here. Oh, sorry. I thought you were doing it on hers. No, you're closer to check. There you go. Feel the difference. Oh, yes. Yeah. You just feel it, though, right? That's okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so I wanted you to see the function of that before we began. Okay, now the next item on the machine that I want us to talk about is let's thread the machine. And you see the thread already thread the machine, but what I would like you to do is always, when you unthread or thread the machine, I want you to have your pressure foot in the up position. Okay? And I'm going to tell you why before I unthread this machine. So we'll just do this really quickly. I'm going to rock my hand in the most position. Did you see this is a needle threader? Is what you see. And all, all the machines have them because some are damaged. But what I would like you to see is the needle comes down, and I use my forefinger and my thumb, and I gently rock that little needle through the eye of the sewing machine needle. And then what I'm going to do is use my thumb to push it as a guide. And see that guide, that red guide that helps you the red? You yeah. see that? And it's going to loop back from and let go. See how I got it? And now it made a loop. You see that? And I'll put my forefinger in there. Sometimes it picks the loose really up. How you have to work with loose? I'm going to put my finger in here and pull back that loop. I'm going to do And I have just threaded my needle. That's really cool. Now, I always want you to make sure that when you thread your needle, it's from the front to the back and never looped around because obviously that is binding. And you don't want to bind your thread because then you can't sew well. Can you pull something? Okay, so we're going to unloop our thread. And from there, what we're going to do is make sure always it's from front to the back. Now, look at my uh, sewing machine thread. Look how hard. I'm not even able to pull it. Do you know why? Oh, I because your thing's down. Mm -hmm. My presser foot is down. That's right. Excellent. Watch when I pick it up. Oh, it should be better. Than this. Right. It flows pretty freely there. You see that? I'm going to put my presser foot back down and show you again. Now, I'm going to turn this. This is what's controlling my pressure. I mean, my tension. This is tension, thread, tension, dial. Let's get a zero and see if it pulls freely. Yes, it does. Do you see, it's just like when my pressure foots up, my thread is flowing freely. Now, when I put my pressure foot down, again, it's, it's free because it's on zero, but I'm going to four. That's where we always leave our machine set. And look how tight. And then if I go to thread tension dial setting nine, notice how tight that is. It broke my knee. Yeah. Okay. Let's put our pressure foot up with my pressure foot lever and pull freely again, on, even on nine. So can you see why when you thread and unthread your machine, I would like to put it to be up. It loosens this tension dial. There's a, there's a little squeeze box in there that squeezes the thread. Is what it does. Okay. Sounds like a sweetheart, huh? <laughs> okay, you always leave it three, four, or five if it's really four. Okay? And then, did I tell you there's a thread cutter here already? You hold your thread like dental floss right here. <laughs> well, you can stand up if you want to because it's really warm in here. And pull it between, between the thread cutter like dental floss. Okay, that's what that function does. All right, now let's see what else I need to teach you about. Well, we've threaded our machine, and we know we're going to unthread our machine with our pressure foot up. So I'm taking my thread off, and what I would like you to do is this is a spool of thread. And so on your test, it calls this a spool pin and a spool stop. Makes sense, right? Spool pin and a spool stop. That's what it calls it. Okay? So because we have a spool of thread, you need to know how to thread the machine. Do you see that big 
Okay, that I don't want towards the front of your machine. And see if you can find it on there and on there. And on this one, please. Okay, I want you to look at how okay, your thread can get caught on this. And when a thread is new, you have to pick it up and you have to find it. Like, yeah, you usually on a new piece of thread on this type of spool, this is quartz, that's quartz, you have to pick it up, pick the thread off. And so you have to pull that back and pick the thread off like this. But then it can get larger after you use it for a long time. So what you're going to do is always find where that place was. Because if you have it toward the front of the machine, what can happen? Do you see how I just did that? Watch. Look. See how I caught it like that? Watch real quick. Look. See how I just caught it like that? And it could break. And that can happen on your machine. You know, that's aggravating. So you want to always put the place where your thread is stored and comes off new toward the back of your spool. You put your spool stop on to hold your spool of thread. And we're going to wind the bobbin. Okay. Y'all are too fascinated with We're trying to find a little thing in this Some of them it's hard to find. Okay, so as you look and you're finding this spool of, your spool of thread in the back where it goes toward the back of the bobbin, I mean toward the back of the spool pin, I want you to now think about how am I going to use I have to have a thread on the top through the needle, and I also have to have a bobbin thread on the sewing machine in order to have a stitch be completed. Now, you don't have to have that in hand sewing, do you? You only have one thread, okay? But on a sewing machine, you have to have two. So what I want you to do is put your thread on there and hold it like that on the and I want you to watch this. Okay, you're going to hold this? Hold this. Hear that? Little pop? Yeah. Okay. That little pop means this is a thread got a bobbin on you. See that spring? Yeah. It's spring loaded in there. And that is a good thing because it helps your bobbin to line properly. Then you want to take your piece of thread and you want to cut it. And here's your bobbin. And you have a hole on the top and a hole on the bottom. There's no top and bottom though until you choose it. So your thread goes right here and out one of those holes. It doesn't matter which one. Once you put it out of hole, put it out of hole. This is now my top. Okay? Do you see how I put my thread in here and then out my top? Yeah. Everybody do that. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna have you try. Maybe. Okay. Then I want you to try to put one through there, okay? As you're doing that, I'm going to talk about a, a bobbin that's not been wound properly. This one has not been wound properly, and it has two strings. It should not be like that. You all see that it's not tight, and it has two strings right here. See where that top string dropped down into the bobbin right here? That's not a proper line. I need some scissors. I want to make sure you understood what I said, but we're all going to do this with our machines here in about seven days, okay? Wait, through the outside? This is a lot of thread. This side? Okay. Pick whichever side you want it to be. So I don't have the patience for the hands for this. Okay. I got it on there. You you missed the whole thing. You have to go through the center. Okay. Alright, okay. so that's correct. Yeah. It's wrapped around. Well you had it right though, I thought. 
Guys, when you have trash and you will have thread trash, I'm going to give you a little baggie and we're going to place it on the right side of your machine. And you'll put all your little trash in that bag to the floor and then you'll take it to the trash can and you will empty it, okay? Let me loop it back around. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so now I have some bobbins I can line. I appreciate that. All right, so here we go. So what you're seeing now is, you remember I just put my thread on there, and one thing you need to be sure of is if you take the cover of the thread off, and I wish you would not because it tells you what kind of thread it is, like you want to leave that on there, that cover that you're playing with, because you want to go through the center of this spool thread, not through one of these. When you put it on, yes, okay, when you put it on your spool pen. But it looks the same sort of obvious. One circle. True. True. But you want to leave this on there. It tells you it's all-purpose thread or whatever thread it is. I don't know if I had something. All right. So I don't want yellow thread. I've changed my mind. But I would like red thread. So I'm going to take that off. I'm going to put that place that my thread came off of to the back. I'm putting that on my school pin. I'm placing my school stop. I'm holding it like that. Yes. The top. Uh -huh. Did you hear it? And then put it through that little clear thing. The bobbin. Okay. Now, don't give yours because I'm going to do a demonstration on yours as well. Right now. Then you put it back on that. Just like this. Yes. Now, you're going to put your bobbin on your bobbin spindle. And this is something I want you to see in the demonstration. On my machine, there is a bobbin spindle. And it has a little bitty spring. You see that spring? I want you to feel that spring on there and on here. Hi, I'm video recording. Can you come back, please? Oh, yeah. I'll Thank just you. Some fabric. I can't help you right now, but I promise if you come back, I'll help you. Okay. All right. Did you feel that spring while she was here? Come on up here and feel that spring. Mm -hmm. You feel that spring? It's not sprung and it's there. I want you to feel it. Okay, and then we're going to get up and we're going to that machine. <laughs> Once you feel it, go to that machine over there and look at that bobbin spindle. Over on that machine, it's broken, and I want you to look at the difference in the machines that are here and the machine over there. <laughs> so it won't wind the bobbin. That's the point. This spring is gone from the spindle. I know. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> she made fun. All right, I'll stop. We're not doing that. Here we go. Here we go. All right, here we go. So you're taking this now that I've chosen the top. You hear me? And we're putting it on a bobbin spindle that has a spring because it will wind. Also, this is going from here to here. Now, this is where I want to demonstrate. Can we move it over? Yeah. Can we see it? Not on that okay, way. I want to see it. So what I want you to see on this machine is are two things. And the bobbin spindle spinning and how it does that. And also the needle safety, how you can make it go up and down or not. Okay. It's the same as this, but I thought you could see it better on this. Bobbin spindle goes to the bobbin stop. And now we're going to wind our bobbin, but it won't be in the safest possible manner. Okay, so here I go. I'm going to push on my foot pedal. Watch the machine, please. And watch the spindle and the needle. That doesn't look safe, does it? No. <laughs> and all I want to do is wind my bobbin safely. Do we agree? So our spindle needs to be spinning. No. But what you're going to do is pop this hand wheel out. <laughs> now, when I disengage my hand wheel, my needle won't go up and down anymore. If you can watch that, and this is not great. Take up whatever it won't go up and down. But my spindle spins because it's over at the bottom. You see that? Now, can you see how if you have beautiful long hair, you had a hoodie with a nice strings or a longer necklace or landing, you would not want to get 
in this, would you? So you, when you are running your bobbin, stay back. All right. Now I'm ready to sew. I took my bobbin off and I'm ready to sew. Can I get my foot pedal and sew at this time? Go to red. Well, besides that, popped out. this is popped out. My hand will. And then the needle doesn't go. You're right. Did you understand what you just yeah. said? I'm going to show you. I can't say. If I have three, I can say. All right, so what is this? You got to pop it back in. Right. And you got to put some Okay. But, we're going to now can I say? Yeah, I can't say. All right. So, it all depends on the just like a car. Just like a car. So you're going to be going to drop or something. You're going to be already drop. It's what you're going to be doing. All right. So I'm going to go over this one more time. I'm going to quiz you. All right. I want to wind my bob. And so what do I do? Not you. I'm going to wind my bob. And so what do I do? You told me the first time. I'm going to wind my bob. And so what do I do now? Yeah, and I'm going to show you how to work the bobbin. I want you to tell me. You put the thread on it. Uh -huh. We take that thing off first, you put the thread on it. Right. And put the, the top of it to the back. You wrap it around that little screwy thing right there, and you put the bobbin on that. Like this? Yeah. Okay, now what? You put the thing, the thread through the hole of the bobbin, and put that thing on that. And now what? Is that it? Do I hit the foot pedal? No. How do you know? What do I do? I've got to wind the bobbin. Bobbin's going to be bobbin stop. Now am I ready? Can I wind my bobbin? Okay. What's wrong? No bobbin on it. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me what's wrong. You didn't pop the thing out. Hand wheel for safety. Because I'm trying don't to make the point. needle this go is a safety down. demonstration that you don't want the needle to go in your mouth. But you were right. You were right all along. Okay. Thank you. Early in the <laughs> it is too early in the morning here. It's like three o'clock. Yeah, and I over the summer I didn't get up till four or five o'clock. Okay, here we go. All right, so we did everything you said. Now, what do I do? Check my hand wheel, right? Check my bobbin spindle. Is it where it needs to be? I don't know. Yeah. No, you didn't pop it out first, or you? Push my bobbin yeah. spindle to my bobbin stock. Now am I ready? My pop hand wheel is not popped out. So you're right. Here I go. Let's see what happens. You're going to hold the thread like a dog leash. Very tight, like you're walking your dog by someone. Okay. See how that's going to work? Pretty cool, huh? Is that how they do I'm it? I'm using my foot pedal. Yes. I'm using my foot pedal. Yes. Now watch. Is that how they do that? Yes. Put that thing on there? Excuse me? Put the thread on the bobbin. This is how you wind your bobbin. Put the thread on the bobbin. So that's how they make the thread. So it doesn't take them forever. Exactly. All right, now, if your bobbin were to feel, it would pop over and it would stop automatically. Okay? But since I only feel my bobbin partially, I'm going to take my scissors and cut as close as I can to the bobbin. Because I only want one thread coming out that bobbin. Yeah. Now I move my bobbin back so I can take my bobbin off my bobbin spindle without damaging my bobbin or my bobbin spindle. Okay. I'm going to hold my thread like dental floss. Alright. Now I want to thread my machine. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to take my thread out and run it here so just my thread out the bobbin line. I'm holding my thread like dental floss. Does everybody see that? You see the thread guide? We're sewing. Listen. Yeah. Pull it straight down. And do you see where the thread comes down? Yes. And then it shows you it comes up. Do you see that? And when I come up, then it shows you that you go from this side to that side. That's what that means. So I'm going up, making sure my hand here is up so that I can walk. Pull my thread through. Like you to let it go. Then pull it straight back down through the same place. Now I have a thread guide above my needle for some. Is that pointing with the right machine? Yeah, it is. Okay. And now what I would like you to do is again drop your hand wheel until your needle is in that best position. This is a needle threader. It has a little loop, a little wire that goes through the side of the needle. Very gently push it through there with your back four finger and your left hand. Take it around. Yes, with your right hand. You're going to use your thumb as a guide. See that little free wrap it around that yeah. thread guide? And once you get here, it looks like sort of a candy. Let go. 
and I'm pulling that loop back and through. Okay, and I'm making sure my thread and my needle is from the front to the back, and no loop to catch it with. All right, very good. Now, I want to put the bob and I just wound in. So since the bob and I just wound is red, I want to use a different color. So you can actually see the bobbin color and the top thread. And I want, this is important. This is a bobbin release button. I think that's what that's really good. Bob and cover release. Bob and cover release. Okay, yeah. well, do you see how you understood what I said because it was close enough? Uh -huh. I'm going to grade you that one on your paper. All right? And so this is the bob and cover. It has a diagram of how you're going to fit the bob in there. Okay, so let's see if we can do that. Let's look at our thread. This is the front of our thread. See how threads coming off the opposite way to clock candle turns. Do they see that? Yeah. Let's turn it over and see how it does. Now the thread is coming off the same way the clock handle turns. This is clockwise, and that's how we're moving in the way the clock handle turns. Okay? So we're going to drop our bobbin in just like this. And the reason I drop my bobbin in just like that, do you see this arrow right here? Yeah. Okay, and there's a black arrow in the back. You see that black arrow? Uh -huh. Okay, what you're going to do is drop that bobbin in where the bottom thread is at this arrow. Okay, and once you drop that bobbin in, you're going to hold that thread and your finger on the bobbin, your forefinger, and listen. You hear that click? Yeah. And you take your thread to the back. Arrow. You don't have to touch your machine like I always do, but you can check see if it's in there right because it's a real silver finger. And yes, it is. Okay. So here we go. I want to make sure that it looks like that, and it does. And I'm putting my bobbin cover back on. You see how it's in If they don't see it in there right, it just snaps back on. This piece and this piece, make sure you put them back on your machine in case we get lost. Oh, that's the bobbin. That's her You have to have two threads on a sewing machine for A bobbin thread and a top needle. We're going to show. You could use the same color if you wanted to, but she wants to use a different thread. So you can see the top stitch. You know the bobbin that she put, the red one? Yeah. She decided not to use that one. She's using the yellow one. Thank you. That's right. So that's your normal thread. Yeah. And then the bobbin. Yeah. And you have to have two threads. You have to have two threads. Now, I keep moving my machine around. This is a former student. She put her name on here, and I'm going to give you all a paper like this when you're ready to sew. The first thing you're going to do is follow it, and it says Sewing Machine Center 1, and that's where you are with me. And it's the parts teacher demonstration you're called up to this, and I'll give you a parts test on day 7. And then you'll you have a machine know. thread well, bobbin on your paper you know. And you're going to repeat C daily until I approve you for independent operation. Okay? And so what that's going to look like, and I am looking for stitches that look alike on both sides of the paper. Keep these papers in your tray or notebook with a date complete your name and other labels as directed on this guide. Straight stitch. This is what this looks like. The papers, you will find them over there on the second shelf. You see? Okay, and then you see square stitch. It looks like this. Oh, that's cool. And then you find circle stitch. It's right here. The circle side. It looks like that. So do you have to knot it? On the back stitch. And it tells you that right here, and I'm going to show you that. This is a back stitch right here on this paper. It launches your stitch in just like the knot does. That. I'm going to show you how to do that as well. Okay. Now, stitch selector dial. Do you know where that is? I haven't told you yet. Yeah, close, but no. That shows you width. So that's your zigzag width dial. I'm guessing it's the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Well, this has 1, 2, 3, 4, but yes, you're right. This is the stitch selector dial. This is a sewing guide right here, and this is a ruler. Okay? And this is reverse. All right, so this is stitch length, this is stitch selector, and this is stitch width. And this controls my open and watch my needle. It's on the fifth position right here. Watch it, it's going to the left. So it does pack. It's all the center. And this is still a straight stitch. We could put a uh, zipper in using this far reaching needle. But it stays in park. And for park is this, it's very easy. Park is two on the face, right here. What was this called again? 
compressor foot pressure dial. And four on this, what's this called again? Thread tension dial. And five on this, what's this called? Zigzag width. And then what's this called? It stays on the Select dial. And this is our stitch length, and it's going to stay on three for part. When you leave your machine every day, put it in park, okay? And that's what I'm on. And then, what you're going to do is then I'll straight stitch paper so everyone will have this, and you'll go through and you'll do this. We're going to cover zigzag as well. But let's go ahead and sew on paper so you can see it. So, right. so the first thing I want to do is make sure that once I get that top thread through my needle, okay, shh. Guys, make sure if you're listening to music that um, you get work done as well first, okay? You're doing great out there. Is everybody okay? All right. I can tell you are. Thank you for working well. So, you're making sure your needle is threaded properly. It is. You're making sure your thread in your bottom is in there properly. We know it is, right? You're going to take your hand wheel and pop it in. I did disengage where I ground my bottom, right? I'm going to turn it toward my heart. We always turn our hand wheel toward our heart. You watch this thread take up the lever in the needle as I turn my hand wheel toward my heart. And you're going to hold this thread tight like a leash. Okay? Tight and taut. You're going to pull on it. So here we go. And it's going to pick up that bobbin thread. That bobbin thread is going to come up through the needle throat plate. Here we go. We will watch that thread. You can see it come around. I'm shaking that. See that red thread down in there? You don't always get it on the first time. You see? Yeah. Okay, now watch as I turn my hand wheel. It's pulling that thread around. It's going to loop it up through the needle throat plate is what this is. And I'm going to pull that loop out just like I did before. I want two strings. See how that works? Do my two strings? Yeah. Notice I threaded that with my uh, presser foot lever up. If I had done it with it down, it would have been too hard, right? So here we go. Cut your thread. Thread cutter back here, pull it like down plus, and then you'll have strings about this long because your 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 thread take up lever needs to be the top when you start and stop. Always, always. It's very important. I'm going to show you why. We're going to start. We're going to put our presser foot down. This needle thread plate has divisions. The standard seam allowance is five eighths of an inch. And again, we're going to make sure those threads are to the back. Okay, can you see how I put my presser foot down where the red is? You don't want to have something in air. You want something under that presser foot and the feet. So here I go. I'm going to start with my hand wheel. Because remember, I said I, I could sew with just my hand wheel. So now we do two more stitches to my foot pedal. One, two, and I'm going to do reverse to lock it in for two to three stitches. And that's what I showed you on that paper of the past student. She locked it in. Now, if you will notice, I am not doing anything to my paper, am I? It's sewing itself. Can you see that? I'm going to let it go. Look how straight that is, right? So I want you to know that if you want to you know why? Watch this. You're probably getting locked in. You're probably doing this. See how soft this is? Miss Billy's making Miss Billy's made us do that. She's wrong. She made it. She said, watch, 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 watch. I don't want you to do that. I want you to do this. I want you to let the machine do its work. You're just guiding it. Did you see how easy that is? See, I'm going to do this with my hand. See, put it on there and just and then you reverse it and lock it in. That's right. And I'm going to go to stitch select this board. Since you all have your Chromebooks on that Alright, so here we go. I'm stitching on the floor on four. You see the difference in stitch length? Look how much longer the four is than three. Do you see that? Now I'm going to go two, and I'm going to actually turn like I'm doing a box. Wait, so what is so Yeah, yeah. Notice I've got my needle inserted into the paper, and I'm picking my paper, I'm just turning them, I'm not doing anything. I'm picking my pressure foot up, and I rotated my paper. See that? I'm holding the line with that needle. 
Now I'm going to go to two stitches. Yeah. So would you do that with square stitches? Yes. Thank you for saying that. That's exactly what you said. So I'm on two stitch length. Again, I want to fold the line. I'm picking it up. I'm going to one stitch. Wait, so in that circle stitch, would you have to look like a quarter? I'll show you again. Like she wrote it. Okay, look how tiny this little stitch is. Ooh, and it almost tears your paper because it's so tiny. See that? Tiny, tiny. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to three. And what I'm going to do is not put my needle in my paper, and I'm going to pick it up and turn it. And I did not hold my line when I did that. You see that? I did not hold my line. So therefore, my paper is off from where it should be, like a nice square, like when you turn. You want your needle point and start it in and stay in there. But I just turn without having my needle point in my paper and picking up my pressure fit and turn it. And see how it looks? Oh, so you turned it while the pressure yes. was down? Yes, I did. And okay. that, so while the needle's down, and oh. the pressure fits up. And it makes a nice square for you. You understand? Uh, okay, I'm about finished with that, but I want to show you something that's very important. I'm in park right now, and I want you to watch this. Okay, now I told you I could do all kinds of things with my machine. You saw how my machine's supposed to operate, right? Watch this. Can I do that with my machine? No. I mean, if it were fabric, it would not tear. Yes. I mean, well, no, I'm trying to show you that I can actually pull my, I can pull this backwards, and if I started over here, you could actually see it better. Watch. Okay, here's my story. I didn't start what I told you that should have been under my pressure press. Back stitch, right? That's it. But now, I, instead of holding it, see I'm pulling it back. I can make my machine do crazy things. Is that machine happy? No. I am forcing it to do something I just want to do, aren't I? Okay. Now, I want you to watch this, too. Remember how I said it's so, so pretty? It kind of looks like a puppy. Or a chicken. Anyway. It looks like a seahorse. Like okay. Now, you watch this. You watch this. And what did I say I was going to do? I'm going to bind my machine like you see. I'm going to hold it. It's not going anywhere. Well, now it is. Look, it's not going anywhere. Why? It does the work for you. Why would you want to do it? She made us Okay, and she made us go like really, really, really slow. Like it's like this. It's slower than that. Well, I think you should hold it like this. That way you can turn it quicker and easier. Is everybody good with that? She made us barely. But now, just put that out of your mind because you're learning a new technique. Where's the yellow? Oh, you want to see it? Okay, let me show you something else. <laughs> let me show you something else before I stop. Okay, now you know I, that sounds weird because I want to get over here. You see how I've got all this gunk in here? I really like to have it on the outside. It's much easier to sew with everything in a clear space on the outside than in the neck of the machine, okay? So once I get there, I want to stitch forward and I'm going to back stitch and lock it in. Did you see that? Yeah, you okay. press down. Now, yeah, now what have I not done? Is every like my needle still in there? Can I keep turning the hand wheel until it's at the top right here? And then I want to take it out. But now my thread take up lever is not up here. You see that? I'm going to turn my hand wheel until it is toward my heart. Now, once it's toward my heart, I have two threads pull and cut. That's what I want you to do. Then I want you to get ready for the next stitch. This should be at the top. Always when you stop and when you start. Are you hearing me? It's important. Let me show you why. All right, so I'm starting again with my hand, going two stitches, back stitching one or two, lock it in, going forward. I'm not going far. And uh, let's just say my needle's still in there. Okay, I want my needle out. My needle's out. Now watch this. My I did not turn my hand wheel, and my thread take up levers down in the sheet. When I pull this out, I've got two threads down here. Should I hold? No. no. And so I know I've done something goofy. I don't want to tear my paper, so I'm cutting really close right here because I don't, I don't I'm nervous and I don't want to, I don't want it to mess up. And so, oh, I forgot. Well, I'm going to turn my hand wheel and watch my thread come out of my needle because it's a thread take up lever. It's taking your thread up. You see this? So I'm turning my hand wheel toward my heart. Where'd my thread go? Up, up in there here. At the top. You see why I told you it is so important. Start and stop with your thread take up lever. If you've ever put your car, just stopped it and turned it off without putting it in park, <laughs> or you can't turn it back yeah, on turn it off because you're in drive, yeah, you got to put it in park. It won't turn back on. You have to straighten up. That's why. Okay, we're getting into this. 
you have no comment. <laughs> if you don't have a straight drive and it's an automatic, it won't start again and drive. It's only in park. Okay? Alright, <laughs> All right, so guys, you're going to have to retread your machine. Can we all do this? Down. Look. Down. Up to the right. Like the floor, to the left. Right. And then pull that thing down after you glue back. Mm -hmm. And turn here. Do you see how I'm getting that in that yeah. thread guide right here? And then rock in your hand field. And then hold the needle behind your thumb or behind the board. See? Like that. Oops, I'm in. But see how much time this takes? I mean, my shit. Look how it looped way up here. Do you see that? Look, right here. See it? And I gotta pull it loose, but still it's coming through, right? Okay. Now that's what I want you to see. Well, now I've still got two threads down in there. I've got to do something about it. Let's see if I can do it again. But I'm ready to go to zigzag, y'all. Yeah. Can you make it nice? Listen to how we do it. Okay. Let's see. Let's see what it does with that thread down in there. It actually works. Okay. I could make it nice. But I'm going to do it with a zigzag motion. Change to zigzag. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change your pattern. Pattern. And this is a stitch selector, so it's called on there, to two. So you'll only use one and two. And then I would like to go to the widest zigzag, which is five, and the longest zigzag. Right there. And it has the numbers. And if you explore, then we can count. <laughs> you ready? Here we go. So this is the widest one, right? Now let's go to a smaller one. Okay, what would make it smaller? If you change the three, or, yeah, you can know, change it to three or two. This one? Yeah. And then what? And then you got to change the little zigzag, how big you want it. To a what? Yeah, we're going from... Four to three, and from five to four, and it says to do that on here. You start with four, length dial, and width dial five, and then you go to length dial three, and width dial four, which I just did. Okay? So you have to do this too. Right? So if it's like a one, then you go to two, and if it's a two, then you go to three, and if it's a three, you go to four, and four. Just you follow the directions. So yes. Okay. Now you'll have four papers. I'll see. Just if it's one, you go to one. Yeah. But watch, you're going to do all of one paper on stitch length four, stitch width five, and she's labeled it. You see that? That's what I want you to do. And I don't want you throwing away your work like I did when I was a child. This is stitch length three, stitch width four, which I'm on now. We'll see if it looks like that, and then we'll see if this one looks correct. Stitch length two, stitch width three. And then, How many sewing machines do you have? Just enough. And then stitch length one, stitch width two. Why does that one go through? She messed up. Are you perfect? I know I'm not watching. That's what I was going to tell you when I made my double leaves. I told you this story, didn't I? Yeah. My mom came home and I had a pile of paper and she said, I think your teacher really just wants to see your improvement, not the perfect double leaves. That's what I want to see. All right, so here we go. Okay, this is back to this. Well, now I'm going to not change this. Is that true? Yes. I'm going to length. Change to two, width two, three. Are we good? Now I'm going to change from three to two and from two to one. And let's see how that looks. Looks like baseball, does Okay, I'm pretty much finished. We're going to backstitch the lock again. And then remember, turn your hand fill into the thread. Oh, I'm going to do the whole thing. Just a and then you cut your thread. And then we're going to do that. It's yellow. Isn't that cute? There's your S. Best I can do. You're the best I can do. So see how the stitches look alike on the front and the back? If they don't look alike on the front and the back, ladies, you know what that means you've done? Not threaded your bobbin properly. If your thread is not enough to have enough threaded what's happening, ladies, you forget. Yeah. I'm going to let y'all play with this now so that you can see how you do and thread it. You're not so I just want you to see if you can actually thread the machine. I can do it. All right, now have your papers because you understand how we're going to take this test. Is that Here's correct? Thank you. Isn't that lovely?
Thank you very much. Michaela, will you come assist me, please? Thank you. We're finished for the day. I appreciate your help. Thank you all at home. Have a great day.